What does a painting battle consist of? So first, we fight with brushes. First, we fight. And then, we tell the other team hurtful things like, your proportions are off, or you suck at color theory, and that you'll never be an artist. And then, once we're done throwing hands and verbally and mentally wearing each other down, we create a themed painting while we are being perceived. Not like this. This is different. People are watching you and they are witnessing the art unfold in real time. I know, that sounds like a nightmare for introverts. Now, what do you need to be in an art battle? One simple thing. The audacity. You just need the audacity to show up and be yourself. That's all you need, really. Who cares about your painting skill? You just need the audacity. But subjecting yourself to the critique of the public in real time, that can hurt. That can hurt sometimes, if you care. But I really needed to overcome that. If you want to be an artist, you can't help that people will look at your work and have their own opinions about it. I joined a painting battle to prove to myself that all I have to do is love my art, love what I make, and allow my art to be seen. Because it deserves to be. I did not put in all of these hours, all of this time practicing this craft, not to share it with everyone. So the first time I did an art battle, it was with the same friend, it was last year. By the way, I put all of the artists involved in this battle in the description. I would really like you to take a look at their work because all of them are creative geniuses and I love what they make. Anyways, the theme last year was boom. So naturally, Mara and I thought of the Mayon volcano in the Philippines. And so we created a piece based around that and the legend of the two lovers. The way it works is that we have 80 minutes to create a painting, 40 minutes in the first half, we have a 15 minute break, and then we have another 40 minutes to finish everything off and put on final touches. And then at the end of the night, the paintings of all teams are auctioned off to the audience members. Last year was Mara and I's first time participating in a painting battle and the audience ended up liking our piece and we won. But let me make this clear, okay? Let me make this clear. Most of the time, artists don't care about winning at events like this. I can't speak for all of them, okay? But general consensus is I'm just happy to be here. Most artists, they're just happy to be there, happy to paint with everyone, and it's honestly just something fun for us to do. All art battles are different. We know that art is subjective and it just depends on the viewer as to whether or not they like the piece or if they connect to it. So really, art battles are done just to share the love of art and just the love of the craft. Also to get artists out there to meet each other so you can get involved in the community. Winning at events like this is nice but it's not necessary just to feel good about your art. If anything, I feel good simply for showing up and literally just getting myself out the house. However, when you come from an immigrant family though, <laughs> I know I said winning didn't matter, but when you come from an immigrant family, events like these are important, especially if you have traditional parents and you are their creative child. Unlike sports, sports have like first, second, and third place trophy. You can train all your life to get to the Olympics. With artists, there isn't really anything like that. There, It's a very broad field. Not to say that there are no ending achievements. There definitely are, but it's just not as defined as it would be in like sports for example. So although my motivation in entering this painting battle was not really to win, my motivation was to literally just show my parents what I do 
Personally, I find it harder to convince people closest to you versus convincing strangers because I feel like strangers, they see you the way you present yourselves to them in that present moment. Whereas with your family, they've known you your entire life, pretty much. And as far as I know, to my parents, I am still a baby in diapers and I am just barely learning the alphabet. There is also the idea that pursuing something creative doesn't make sense in this economy, but to me, it does. Monetarily, not really. I don't know. It's a possibility. But spiritually, mentally, emotionally, I need art. I need it. Because if I don't make art, and if I can't consume art and share art, I will shrivel up and cease to exist, the shell of my vessel wandering aimlessly for eternity with no purpose, no life, no love, no nothing. Because without art, I would just be an organism. But with art, I feel human. So participating in events like this... um. How did I get there? (laughs) So we got some bigger emotional stakes to acknowledge here. Mara and I were invited back this year to participate in the painting battle that happened a couple weeks ago. The theme of this year's event was freestyle since it is the grand finale. So all of the previous winners from previous competitions, they come and compete. We decided to stick with our roots and create a painting inspired by the master painter Fernando Amorsolo from the Philippines. His work, it depicts like the simple rural living and lifestyle of the Philippine people. It often focuses on landscapes and nature, which is very similar to what Mara and I like to create in our own time. So here is what we did leading up to the battle. And you will be hearing my thoughts on this. So we just did a little bit of the planning. This is the kind of vibe we want to go for. Since it is freestyle, both of us had like pretty similar ideas. Highlighting femininity, but in a... Setting. <laughs> yeah, but in a Filipino setting. So the kind of vibe that we thought was like when the ladies would go out to the water and like wash their clothes or just swim around and have fun. We really liked the feeling and the idea of that. And we wanted it to look like, yeah, just people having a fun time together. So we are in Mara's studio right now and we just finished painting this lovely, lovely practice. This is practice. This is this, practice. This isn't even the real thing. Yeah. What do you think? I, I freaking love it. it and I want to hang it up in my house. <laughs> okay, you can keep and it. I probably will. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. <laughs> so this is basically the size of the canvas that we're going to be using for the competition. Like just where the picture is, like it cuts off here. Yeah. So. It's a pretty big canvas, but on, I'll show you up close. Okay, so this is the vibe that we have going on. You know, just 
us Filipino ladies hanging out in the water, splashing around, having fun. Yeah, having fun, literally just living life because this, this is what we want. This is what we want for ourselves. Yeah, this is our goal in life. Yeah, we want to be them. Yes, <laughs> that's for sure. So this was like kind of similar to the first painting. Yeah, that was similar to our first painting. It's almost like a, like a callback. Yeah, it's like a continuation of it, but maybe that was like the other side of the mountain yeah. and this is what's happening on the opposing side. You can put like a little lizard. It didn't dry, so like maybe I'll, yeah, I'll make that one nicer yeah, yeah. next time. Because then you can put like the light on it too. Right? Yeah. But yeah. It's not like, I think it's giving. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really pretty. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. So that is our first practice yeah we have one more practice mm -hmm. and we're just gonna refine it uh, we realized using palette brushes was the play I'll show you the texture up close ooh grass <laughs> yeah it just gives it a bit more texture and gives it a bit more depth something something and then it, it's more visually appealing yeah I love those paintings where when you get really up close to where you get really close to it, you're like, but it's all just little tiny dots. Yeah, it, whatever. It doesn't like compute up close that, oh, those are blades of grass. And yeah, I think it, it's really nice to, take, to be able to take a step back and, and look at things in perspective because that's life. <laughs> that's the Filipino people. Yeah. You look at us up close, you're like, what is this? <laughs> but when you step back, back and then you see us as a whole, it's like, oh, makes sense. <laughs> I think you did a good job. I think you killed it. One more practice to go. And then it's the real deal. With me being the way that I am, with perfectionist tendencies, I felt like I needed to practice a little bit more. I had done some studies based off of Amor Solo's paintings, which I ended up not filming, so I took to my shelf to practice from a few of my books. Most of these books I bought secondhand. I wish I could get a book about Filipino artists specifically, but I have yet to find the right one, so I guess these European painters will do. In my mind, there's absolutely no way I can fail at something if I know that I put in the time to practice. And since Amorcelo is best known for the way he uses light in his paintings, I did these studies to practice values instead of trying to match colors specifically. my bolero filipiniana in the mail i'll put it on i'm gonna you know what the slang term of bolero is 
Yes, Claire. Claire. Yeah, I know. But that's what this is called. Technically, it's a bolero because it's like the half thing. I'm not a player. I'm not gonna be a player. I mean, technically, I am a player at this event, but not player as in like womanizer or like. Yeah. So I'm gonna wear this at the paint battle on Friday to represent. I'm not gonna wear it with the Marvel shirt, although that would be kind of funny. But, ooh. Yes! Philippines! They're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hi, my name is Marion Valdez. But Marion Valdez, age 20 years old. <laughs> Sorry! Sorry! Philippines! Philippines. <laughs> Sorry! It's so pretty. I think these are beans. Beans, peas, flowers. I love these ones, they're so pretty. I like this fabric, it's pretty breathable. And I remember the last painting battle, I was sweating pretty hard because I was wearing a long sleeve turtleneck. I don't know why I did that, but I'm gonna wear this during paint battle. Ooh, ooh. Last practice. Go. This was our first practice. And then this was our practice from today. Definitely yeah. improvements. I like the brighter sky. Mm -hmm. I feel like the sky is needed to be brighter. Yeah, it's more balanced. If the mountain was taking up way too much but of the sky. Yeah. Look at us all dressed up. Anyways, we look pretty calm and collected in these videos, but I remember my hands shaking when the timer first started. I think I was more excited than nervous from what I remember though. My whole family came out. We also had some friends show up to support and I just remember feeling so appreciated and validated. Of course, I felt confident in my own art and I feel like that's what allowed me to be okay with being seen during this battle. Honestly, it was just really cool to go around and see what others prepared for this day and see how they interpreted the theme for themselves.
Mara and I ended up finishing our painting with 10 minutes left to spare, which gave us tons of time for finishing touches. I didn't get a video of the last bit because I was running around, but here were some of the final photos. The winning team is... Congratulations team 3! Would you like to say any words, ladies? I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Really appreciated all the good vibes. It was just such a fun time painting with everyone. want to congratulate all of the other painters for making it out as well. Just really appreciate it. Now, what did I learn? What did I learn from this experience? Okay, first of all, after the event, we took a lot of pictures to commemorate the moment. We even got interviewed by a Filipino news network, so catch us on TV Patrol if you know what I mean. And then, the thing that I have always dreamed of happening, happened. My parent turned to me and said, Anak, I am proud of you. Once again, I am a baby sitting in a basket, floating down a stream, a river of my own happy tears. It's literally that simple. That's literally all I was asking for my entire life. But anyways, I'm glad that it happened. <laughs> Please don't think I'm feral. Please, I promise you, I'm a normal. I'm a normal girl. <laughs> I understand as a parent that you may withhold your child from participating in certain activities because you just don't want to see them get hurt if they don't do well. But doing well in anything involves a certain level of risk. And while you can't control what the outcome of certain things are, being supportive is the best thing that anyone can do. I'm glad I didn't give up on myself and I'm glad that I had the courage and the confidence to keep on going and do this sort of thing and I am glad that I had Mara by my side. We may have not won a house and lot or a brand new car or a million dollars. Events like this, these are for fun and if anything, the real reward was in here. I am now more confident than before as if I needed another boost to my own ego. <laughs> Okay, as much as I build up my own ego, I am also the same one that tears it down all in one go. No one else does it to me like me. Like, you know when a kid shows you something that they make and it's just a bunch of scribbles on a page and you're like, Oh my god, that's so amazing! That's how I look at my own art now. And honestly, when I changed that perspective, I became much happier with my artwork. <laughs> I just pretend like a baby is showing me something and I'm like, wow, like it's just the fact that a baby was able to pick up a pencil or whatever and create that in the first place, it's a miracle. <laughs> I guess that's a secret of mine to how to like your own art. Just pretend a baby showed it to you because would you yell at a baby for showing you something that they made? What kind of monster are you if you did that? not on this channel we don't do that here behave yourself have some decorum when you take something as personal as an art form and you put it out there for people to see that is the artist's literal live beating heart that you are watching and looking at the moment that you put it out there my soul is naked when people watch me make art in person. That's just how it feels. 
if I think about it a bit too hard, it feels like the process of sharing art is like showing your soul naked because that is my real life beating heart that you're seeing out there. And you have the nerve to tell me that it's ugly? I bet you won't do it yourself. Go ahead. Go put your own beating heart up there for people to see and throw rocks at and tomatoes at and spit on and say some mean things too. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. (laughs) I don't mean to threaten you today. (laughs) I just woke up in a mood. (laughs) But it is scary. It is scary because that's just life it is scary and it's gonna happen anyway so i might as well go and do the scary thing go put myself out there and if people say some stuff who cares i hated myself first now i don't anymore i hated myself first who cares if someone else hates me (laughs) in my art i will acknowledge the good that i see in life and i'll do my best to enjoy my life because that's all that i can do really i can either focus on how everything sucks or i can focus on how hey some of these things suck but for the most part this stuff is really good so i'm gonna focus on the stuff that is good and fun and great all right sometimes i try to get all serious and profound with my thoughts and it just doesn't work because i just get worked up and i get pissed off (laughs) i get pissed off because now okay now i get pissed off because when i was younger i used to be so mean to myself and like for what for what what was what was that for as i said earlier like she was just a baby she was just she's just a baby she was just making stuff why be mean to her hating yourself is useless other people can hate you because they can never truly understand you they have this idea of you in their own head so they can hate you because they just they don't know everything but having compassion for yourself and simply building up the strength and courage to love yourself simply because you exist despite all of your flaws and despite everything that you may have experienced i think that takes some real guts to do it's easy to hate people but truly seeing something for who they are and accepting them despite their flaws and their faults that's difficult that takes some guts and here in the realm of marianne that is what we do we challenge ourselves we challenge ourselves to improve our self perspective not for the sake of performing like simply performing for other people but to make life a bit more bearable and hopefully enjoyable for ourselves because now we can see the great things okay amen give yourself the courage to try because no one else can grant you permission to do that you have to give that to yourself so to finish this video off i want to show you what i did with some of the prize money i am a book lover i can't help it i love learning new things and since i am on this journey i found it appropriate to get these we will be covering Philippine folklore in the next reading. So please come prepared with an open mind. Come bring your notes. There will be a discussion board and a barbecue. Also, I didn't forget about my watercolor painting, okay? I know I still have I still have to do that, but we will do it accompanied by some good stories. As always, thank you for being here. I will see you soon.